Okay. All right. Have we got it? Something like that. All right. So, I want to make a plug. I spent a week at the BLA two weeks ago and went to the 16th. Uh, it's, by, it's every two years. Synthesis Imaging Workshop. So, the question is, you got this radio. Turn radio into images. Right? They teach you how to run the software, get hands-on, they teach you how all the, radio, the, the BLA configurations work, everything. These are all online at the NRAO website, so you can look at, uh, I don't know if they put R's on there yet, but it will be. And then uh, the, they've got the 13th and I think maybe the 11th, every two years they have it. Highly recommend it, because one of my goals now is since they taught me how to do a proposal for the BLA, the GBT, and ALMA, they teach you the software to run a proposal and what all the input parameters are. So all these guys have been taking measurements for years on these <coughs> scopes, teaching you how to make a proposal to, to use the scopes. Okay, and then the software, when you get the data file, how do you turn it into an image? So I highly recommend that, it's every two years, and um, uh, it cost me 200 bucks, but then it's just, that was it, right? But it's limited, it's like 150 people. That's it. So you have to be, you sign up early. And there was more, there were more dialects of English than I could understand. <laughs> I mean, everybody from all over the world came to this thing. So, uh, anyway, um, how much time do I have? Just a few minutes, right? So I, I'm going to make this quick, but we're going to give a little, a little thing on our uh, Pushing Radio site. I think you've seen a bunch of slides already on it, but this is our. Uh, you know, you saw that, Oops, I gave that to you. Here's the original ad that we bought this thing, where we got this thing from. Okay, government property for sale, and you see that picture, you guys would all just start drooling, right? How much? All right? It originally, the site originally had a 500 foot tower here. Okay, and that's since been down. And that was like one of the original pictures. And it, and it was a tropospheric radio thing, and then basically they'd have a couple of these and they bounce signals over the atmosphere and they, and they would send that data that says, hey, here's our communications path. Uh, you have communications army guys at this time. So that used to be, it used to be tied to another, uh, other ones around the city, the country. Okay, here's the, some specs. So we, it's mesh, right? If you ever <coughs> sat next to this thing during the wind, it, it, it sings to you. It's you know, really loud. That's because it's mesh right there, so it's sort of helping the wind. It also says I won't be able to get more than two gigahertz out of it, just because the mesh is too big of a mesh there. Um, and uh, so it's Azel, that's our tower, so we change out the feed right there. And uh, right now we've got a uh, 1420 feed RF uh, uh, fiber already comes down here and then uh, entrenched down to our uh, common band. Uh, here's our comms van. This is so we can get as close as possible to the dish. Um, and the problem with this is that it changes temperature almost 100 degrees during the summer. We've got it that at 170 degrees inside that, so it turns into an oven. And that's one of our engineering things, is how do we cool that thing off, at least make it steady state. But right now it cycles. So right now we've got a problem with that. So normally we take our measurements at night just to keep everything steady state cool. Uh, this is our propane generator you guys put together. This, this was all on uh, propane uh, generator and uh, solar power. And we just recently got a, uh, uh, a grid upgrade. This is, a, this is actually just to show you how we install feeds. The guys climb up the tower and they install a feed. This happens to have been a uh, dual band or dual band VHF, UHF, H or hydrogen. <coughs> 1420, 13, 1296, right? Right on that? Yeah. So 432, two meters. Two-way, two the tropospheric, EME, et cetera, um, built by this guy right here. And so they, we had that up for a while, and uh, now we shifted to a single uh, single one, took that down. But this is an example of how if somebody wanted to have an experiment, and I offer this to you guys. If you guys have an experiment and you want to put your own feet up, we can do that. Okay, so a different frequency, whatever, it's not hard to change out the feed. And then you go put your equipment in. This is like what Skip did. He came in here, we got a feed, put
put out the baseband equipment in the comms trailer, and we, now we're taking measurements very quickly. Okay. Um, this is a, just an example of here's the beginning of the comms trailer. That's our battery thing, so we actually have, you know, everything feeds our battery so we can maintain the thing. This is our RF rack here. So we can do a lot of things. We got the technical tables there, but all the RF feeds come into here, and we can uh, hook the things up. This, by the way, is uh, our our electrician's primary electrician's granddaughter's uh, camera hooked to the Wi-Fi, and and the guys put here so we can monitor <coughs> power and, and various other things and monitor our experiments with our laptop remotely. So believe it or not, granddaughter had the, the most sophisticated piece of equipment there uh, with her pink, uh, you know, thing. But that's how we were controlling the station remotely for a long time. Okay, this is what happens when you have, you're in the middle of a crater and nothing's stopping all your weeds there, right? Your tumbleweeds. This is what it looks like after you clean it out. Right? <laughs> this, is, this is our bunker, it's about, 20, it's about that deep. But, and it's really, this is where it's climate control. This is where we'd like to put our RF stuff in because it's, it's constant temperature, sort of like the 40 foot because it's down underground. It's too far away. Right, there's the thing, it's too far away. Um, this is what it looks like this, so if we ever want to have activities in there, we can bring lots of people in there and uh, have activities. Uh, like you said you put in fiber feeds. We did, we put them into the comm trailer. If you look at the comm trailer, the comm trailer is right next to the dish. So the comm fiber feeds from the here come right in the trench, right into this van here. How long Our problem is that van gets too hot. How long can fiber feeds be? Uh, Skip, you know? Many kilometers. Yes. Okay. Yeah, it should be a good day. We've got power and a lot of other things we send Yeah. Yeah. No, that would be a good idea. I mean, so right now we got them into the comp trailer. That comp trailer has lots of problems. Don't do a comp trailer. <laughs> Unless you got... Now, we didn't have power, so we couldn't run air conditioning in here when we weren't there. Uh, now we can, but we don't, can't afford it. Yeah. I mean, that's easy. Right? Our biggest problem now is that we're, uh, you know, we get $20 a year for Membership, probably you guys can all join. So membership, it's twenty dollars a year, and that won't pay for power now. Now we've got grid power, so uh, so it's, it's it's a mixed blessing. Uh, we now have regular stuff. Anyway, um, we've got our own club station here. So basically, we're trying to put. Remember, this is the guys that uh, oh, Denver, Colorado Springs, uh, public. All right, this is what you get when you get long term dur thing duration. These are the guys. Remember, I said uh, uh, trespassed, and now we now we have that. We, I gave them, I gave them some plugs here, but they were trespassing, and we said, okay, give us the rights to this thing, and make, we make them members, and now they give us all sorts of photos. So they love it now. Now they have official permission. But, um, that's what you do. There's one of the media showers. Uh, I think I should do that. Um, Here's our thing, so right now we have a problem, remember the, all the weeds in the front? Well, it also, if you get all the snow in the front, you can't get out of the, you're stuck in the bunker, and it snows, you may not be able to get out. So we have a point right here. So the first thing we ask the new guys is, can you assemble a spiral staircase? That was my first job, and I immediately went to doing you know, astrophysics instead of assembling this because I couldn't do it, right? So the guys finally got that going. And um, the story that uh, we got here is that this guy here, when he first went in there, had to rappel down here, and there was a dead calf underneath there when he first found it, right? So that's the hole that they first could get to the bunker because they couldn't get in the front before. All right, so that's the kind of, that's kind of, this is Discovery Channel for radio astronomy. <laughs> this is Gold Rush. We don't know what we're doing, but man, we are really, we got a lot of guys willing to do lots of things to do there, right? So we also have a thing that, that you know, the, the dirt's coming down in front of the bunker, and so now we have to put new walls up because now we're ready to get drowned out from the rains, All right? So we've got guys who do everything, right? Uh, this happens to be our dish resisting system the guys built. And they found out later there's not enough. We kept getting data flips on here, so this is now being RF shielded. So we're learning about RFI really quick because we didn't think it mattered, but now we need the, the number of bits, and the bits keep flipping because they didn't put enough shielding on that. 
but it's home. It's, these are all homemade pieces of equipment. So that's some position encoders that are flipping. The counters, yeah, we got we, we got the uh, two gears, and they're and they got uh, uh, eight bit encoders on them, and they and the bits keep flipping by the time they reach the com trailer. So oh. they get they're getting noise in there. So uh, so the guys are you know, they now think they've got it figured out, but. The beauty of this thing is we know dishes very well because we've had to almost rebuild this thing from scratch. There was no copper in there, nothing. The guys had to, because people stole all the copper. So they had to put everything in. Um, this is our new feed. By the way, you see that little thing there? That's a plastic cover on the feed that is now melted because if you leave it there for a long time, and a 60 foot dish is a really good, you know, focal reflector and it melts plastic. All right, so be careful of that. If you got a feed and you, you sit there and aim it there, it will melt all the things that are not melted. So even the mesh dish reflects it up. That's right. So uh, this, is, this is our tumbleweed mitigation plan. Here's our brand new, we're really happy about these poles here because this is our new power grid, which we didn't have before. We just got new power. And um, we thank Skip's project a lot for that. So he's just basically, uh, he's helping us upgrade. And uh, so uh, Skip's uh, done a lot for our, our place. Okay, so this is going to be good for the college, high school <coughs> hydrogen people. Okay, so when I was sitting there, remember I, all that, my last brief, right? You guys fell asleep during, before lunch on that one. So this one here is, I said, well, what if I got this hydrogen, what if I was trying to figure out where the, if there's, my spacecraft's now Earth, right? I, I hate having the sun as the center of us. The spacecraft's Earth. Can I figure out where the Earth is just by measuring hydrogen in its orbit? That's all this is, right? It's just taking the last, the last brief and basically going over, well, let's see if I just figure out where the Earth is. So, um, so I'm not going to review this very much because we just went over that and you guys will fall asleep by doing twice. Uh, or sort of a location using this Doppler and then I'm going to request for data. Because I think that if everybody starts taking hydrogen measurements and they know that there's a velocity shift because of the Earth's rotation, you can tell exactly where the Earth is in its orbit based on just watching hydrogen. Right? So, and I've got, this was sort of the basis. So the sun's going this way in the galactic plane, so it's basically it's going around. And the Earth's going around the sun, and then the Earth's rotating, right? So how do I, and then we've got these sources that are also going around the galactic plane also. So we've got a lot of velocity contributions to this. And we're, we're, what are we after? We're after, where's our position around this? I'm making it a circle. This is a lot of assumptions here. I'm not making it precise math. It's big picture stuff, right? You can tell approximately doing this with very simple math, approximately where, you, where the Earth is, but not exact. All right, and you do more exact later, but nobody would care that I've got too many decimals there. So what's the basic equation for the velocity of the Earth around the sun? So you mean, so you take the gravitational constant, the mass of the sun, and the mean radius of the Earth around the sun, one AU, you get the velocity, the average velocity of the Earth going around the Sun is 29.78 kilometers per second, right? That's the mean, right? It's a little elliptical, so it's not exactly that all year, but we'll use that, right? The Earth, if you take the galactic center, because I'm a galactic center guy, I hate the, the fact that they think that the Sun is the center of the galaxy. Um, the uh, galactic center guy, and I take it at zero degrees, so I don't want to take any sources that are down below the, the plane of the galaxy. I want to take them that they're all zero degrees. Just like the hydrogen measurements we're doing. We're all assuming the galactic latitude is zero. Then we basically got a 60 degree, 60 degree angle. Our orbit is about 60 degrees from the galactic center. So these guys here. So what's that going to give me? That's going to give me that I'm not going to fully get 29 I'll never get 29 uh, kilometers per second in the direction of these sources. That's never going to be my contribution. So what is the contribution? If you take the velocity and you take cosine of 60.2, what's that? That's basically, that gives you the 
the, the speed and the direction of the galactic plane or, or your source, your hydrogen sources, you get about 14.8 kilometers per second. Contribution of the of the uh, orbits of the Earth moving around the sun toward the toward the uh, hydrogen measurement. Okay? So we'll go over this again. So this is the one I really want to have everybody in zero, and I'm going to recommend that to the uh, the galactic czar over here. <laughs> Change the get somebody to put a, a new galactic coordinate system up because this thing really is, does not work for space travel. Galactic space travel. Um, uh, we've already went over this. So fundamentally, is we're, the, the sources we're talking about are here, and the sun's here. But now I've got I'm trying to figure out where this is going and the contribution of the velocity of the sun and the uh, and the the Earth in the that plane, where that hydrogen source is, what we're trying to fix. All right, so it's not a lot. So I already showed you that and how you figure out the velocity on that on your charts. Um, and uh, so this was hard to find, but I found a source that said, "Where is when is the Earth closest to the galactic center in its orbit?" And in, it's summer solstice. So June 23rd is what I got. I got. Now, I've not got a second confirmation on that, but I found one source that says summer solstice is the Earth, if you take the orbit, the Earth is closest to the galactic center on summer solstice, June 23rd this year, right? So that was my starting point. When are we closest? Right? And so if we're here, that means that 360 day, you know, 365 days, so that I had to go, you know, 90 degrees. I was trying to say, where in my degrees, if that's zero and this is 270 and this is 180, where, where are we in the thing? So I put everything in, I changed 365 days into 360 degrees. So we're, it's not one to one exactly. But basically, if I'm here and I'm running around here, I'm going in this direction, I have no contribution in the galactic center for velocity because I'm going across the velocity. My, my, if I'm here, I'm going directly away from the source. So I am, uh, I've got contribution in that direction. Here I've got zero again, because I'm going that way. And here I've got going toward. So that could tell you, based on that, it could tell you where you should be in, the, in that ring based on velocity. Now, obviously, if I'm here, <coughs> I get the exact same number that if I'm here. If I'm here, I get the same number that I'm here. So I've got some ambiguity, which means I need to take more than one measurement. Okay, so I've, so I've got it set up so I, my calculator so I can take at least two measurements and then I can figure out the ambiguity. So I know that I'm either here, 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 and here, because if I just take that number, I could either be here or here. Or if I take this number, I could be here or here. Okay, if I'm zero, I could be here or here. So if you take two measurements, it seems that you can, you can figure out that ambiguity. So that's the goal. You take two measurements almost at the same time at different galactic longitudes, and you can come up with where the Earth is. This is really, remember I said that there's geeks in here who will check these numbers out? I've got this and anybody wants the Excel file. But fundamentally, if I'm at the longitude zero, here is, and these are the dates, here is the velocity corrections that you need to make to the, to the date, you get your normal hydrogen measurement, right? What is the velocity corrections based on the Earth's movement? These are it, in kilometers per second. That's all it is, it's real simple math. You've already seen the, the calculations. This is just the chart, because when you actually take the measurements, you're gonna to wanna to go to this chart and figure out, at this date in my galactic longitude I'm measuring, here is the correction I need to make for velocity. So that's just a night chart, but you'll use it. Okay, so how does it work? If I take, this is from my database here. If I have a 10 degree longitude here, then, and uh, so what I did is, these measurements were taken in the database by December 9th, right? And so based on that, my baseline is that it was a 36 degrees, 36 kilometers per second. At 40 degrees of longitude, it was a 65, kilometers per second. So these are my actuals. It seems that December 9th, I'm at 170 degrees. So I'm almost down here, right? 10 degrees from directly away from the galactic center. 
right? That's what it shows. So what does that say? That if I have two numbers here from, uh, from two different things, galactic longitude 10 and galactic longitude 40, I now can figure out exactly where I am in the degrees around the orbit. If I need two, right? Because you're unique. And so it looks like this is December 9th. It says here's where I'm at. Those are the two data points I got. And if you just simply follow the math, here's your two data points. So right now, you can take this chart. If you take the, take the, this chart, you can do everything from 10 to 0 to 80 degrees. But here I just did two of them, 10 to 40 degrees. If you take two things, you measure the, the velocity you're getting out of your hydrogen thing, you can tell exactly where you are, you are in your circle. Okay? Perfect one, you guys are measuring hydrogen, what are you going to do with the data? It's really cool to have hydrogen data, but nobody cares, right? Is that what you're getting? That's great. This is really good. You just, I just did all this engineering. And then you go, yeah, what do you do with it? Well, this is what you do with it. You're tracking the Earth's movement around the sun. Have a nice day. And you can just sit there and track it and collect data and be really cool high school kids instead of, you know, geeks. Right? I, I, I'm a geek. All right? I grew up as a geek. I got more degrees than most geeks, so I, I feel. Hey, I used to be called names because I had something on my belt called a calculator. And now you can't find anybody without something on their belt, right? And they considered. Yeah. <laughs> so here's my data request. This is in your book. Data request is if you give me your galactic latitude, galactic longitude. Now, by the way, this can be 3D. I've got the math for the 3D so that I can do below the galactic plane. But I recommend doing galactic latitude zero, right? So I want to go on the galactic plane. You tell me your max frequency, boom, boom, boom. You give me the data then we can plot it and we can see if we can track the Earth around the Sun. Okay? In galactic centric coordinates. All right? So not, anyway. So this is, and I think this would be cool. This is something you can sit there and just start collecting your data and say, hey, here's where the Earth is right now. And, and plot that during the whole year. And it'd be a really cool project. And we can see how that, we make better charts and stuff like that. Anyway, so that's my, that's my pitch. Um, any questions? What if you uh, prove that the Earth is not actually orbiting the sun? <laughs> <laughs> okay, here's what, okay, so we are not orbiting the sun, we are orbiting each other, right? You know that, right? right it's a barycentric thing. It's just that we'd be really, we'd be inside the sun's corona. But anyway, um, what I'm thinking we're going to find is that 60.2, where I couldn't find the reference of how we are angled to the galactic plane, is wrong. That we're real, and then we also have some kind of elliptic. So we are not going to be exactly, a, this is assuming a circular orbit, which we know we're not, at an inclination to the galactic plane. And if I get a bunch of data points at different galactic things, we can come up with a very precise orbital, we should be able to get a very precise orbitology of the Earth around the Sun, right? Very precise, using all this data with multiple hydrogen sources. And we'll find out that we are, I don't know how they figured out we were in our, our orbit, right? This will give us an independent, very precise orbit. We can measure exactly how much our, uh, you know, everything is. So uh, we can, I think we can come up with some cool data. You should be able to back out our angles of the galactic plane with this too. Absolutely. Precisely. Absolutely. And uh, so that's that's the thought, and it seems real simple. We're using everybody's collecting hydrogen data, and just use it for something. Okay, that's all I'm doing. Anyway, that's uh, any more questions? Because you're gonna fall asleep in two seconds. Uh, I'm done. Thank you, sir.